Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I am going to get into another hacking video. And uh, th it's been a while since I've done cybersecurity videos. I've gotten to pass why I pretty much phased out of that. But uh, I figured that this one's a little bit necessary because I've been hearing a lot of bad advice over the past few days and also a lot of, um, let's say, incomplete advice. Like, as I saw Grand A under A's video, and it's incomplete. It's, it's, there's some good things in there, but it's incomplete all entirely. And there's misconceptions of how this latest hacks has been happening. So for those of you who don't know, basically um, what's been happening is hackers have been using social engineering methods to get into the phone service providers and, and trick them into making it seem like it was major YouTubers. Um, there's Linus that happened to him with the Canadian phone provider. Um, Boogie happened to him, I think Verizon. Um, he they, they even stopped it many times and it broke through. Uh, and there's quite a few others that's happened to it's just a newest thing. And unfortunately, um, a lot of people don't know what I'm about to tell you. Now, big thing I found out when I was little, uh, I, I basically uh, went on the internet quite a bit when I was uh, little on the phone. And I um, obviously used up all the data very quickly. So I had to end up tricking the phone provider to give me more data. And my parents ended up figuring out that they're, I'm siphoning off the data off of their phones into mine. And one thing that they found out that is being used today that I um, tried to help you with is you can put a verbal password on the actual plan. So it turns out many phone providers, you can actually put a verbal password just to even change anything. Like you can do basic things like you can say how many minutes I got or how much data I got, stuff like that. But if you want to actually do some actual changes, then you um, you got to have the verbal password. Now, it's not a 100% fail safe. The reason why is I wasn't even get, able to get by it once or twice. And the people who allowed me to get through, they got fired. But um, with that in mind, it, it's social engineering. It basically is a manipulation and to make a person do what you want. So it allows you to get into the system. What a lot of the uh, social engineers do is um, they'll have a female that's doing it, the actual thing. They'll have a sound of a crying baby or something like that in the background. And the uh, if, if they're going after a male's accounts, they'll actually have the crying baby in the background, make it sound like the person is all hesitant and and and. and really flustered and they need to get into account for whatever reason and the person on the other end they will break down and have emotional connection to that and that's what the hacker would really aim for if it's uh male because um it usually doesn't work um when they're hacking into a female's account uh for whatever reason, uh, it's it's it seems to only work when the person is hacking into the male account. So once if you are hacking into female account, well you have a reverse of that. Um, I've seen it where if you're going to company accounts, what you do is you go into the busy street in like say New York or whatever it doesn't matter just has to have cars sound or we can even have cars playing in the background have a spoof phone number and obviously do all this stuff on spoof numbers but then what would end up happening is is you sound like you're working on their systems you want to go home there's a connection between you and the uh, person behind a desk and you, you need this done and it goes from there but that that's for getting into business systems. I've seen it 
where hackers have used that, uh, white hats have used that in order to get into um, their client's systems uh, when the client refused to give them an IP address so they wanted to actually have the white hat to do it like a legit hacker. And, uh, and it took them maybe about 20 minutes to get into the uh, system and then the next day had a report in, in the company. And we're talking about a major bank. They thought that it was going to take about a month to get in. So that happens in itself. Um, so it, none of this is, is a foolproof deal. There is no foolproof deal on that. Um, except for in its obscurity. It, it's, it's not foolproof, but obscurity is the key to a lot of people. So notice that if the, uh, you know, you as a viewer, you, you don't really have an importance and whatever, you're actually a lot safer than someone else. So let's say if, um, let's use a president for example, if you have a president of any country, they um, have the ability to be hacked. Will people jump on that more so than the common person? That if he, if a common person dies, would anyone care besides their family and anyone close to them? No. So would they go after that person versus something like a president? No, they'll go after the president because that's more of a juicier target, more money that, that they can get out of that. And um, that's a big thing to note. In fact, um, I, I'm, well, I'm not going to get into that for safety reasons. But as far as that goes, a uh, big thing to note is you can set a verbal password like you do with the uh, banks. But one thing you need to do is look at the security policies with the um phone companies and and do the same with other things it, it's a matter of time before you see it happen with electric companies with water companies and so on it's, it's just a matter of time before you see that so you might want to check if you can do that with them too it's it's, it's really no harm in doing that um and that that's that's one thing to note now um should you if you have multiple things should you use different verbal passwords the answer is yes but i would say use a different verbal password for your bank and everything else at worst so if you can't remember a lot that might help um your bank needs to be totally separate but with that one in mind the there should be some difference if possible so uh, as far as that goes, um, and and like everything else, everybody's pretty much point out to use a different password per site, and obviously have it quite long and, and complex. And what I use is LastPass. It has a password generator on it. Just use that, and um, and that works fairly well. Uh, the longer, the better. The more complex, the better. That way, dictionary hacker, a uh, di dictionary software does not get in. And I have videos on a lot of this stuff. It's not that hard to deal with. Um, and I even got again how to combat that um, and use things like AS two fifty six encryption. It takes ten thousand years for modern day computers to break that. So if you actually have a worthwhile password, again, if you don't, then any idiot with five minutes can break into it so your password does need to be worthwhile so with that that's a big thing to note in itself and and uh as far as that goes i mean without spouting the obvious uh, it's in it right here uh w one thing i want to note though is uh, with the verbal passwords try to make it not um obvious try to use something odd and try to use n numbers and letters so something something that's unique and, and to you so that's pretty important in itself um but check the security policies because each company might not allow you to do something like that so it's pretty important to note in itself 
And one of the reasons why you want to check the security policies is you want to see who will pay for the the uh, fix because that's a big thing is um, since the phone service, it was happening through their end, will they pay through to fix any mishaps that happened through their thing? And you might actually be able to get something out of that. So if it does happen, because again, nothing's foolproof. If it does happen, then you might be able to get something out of it at the end, or it might be incentive for them to take the extra steps to not allow people to get into the systems. With that being said, um, data breaches do happen all the time. So that's a big thing you need to note in itself. Um, one thing that was said before I forget, one thing that was said is that that was advised is actually pretty clever is use a phone number that's not associated to your name um one thing i do is um you you can make a google voice number like that doesn't cost you anything and in most areas you can make it it's the united states i i think europe i'm not sure but basically if google voice numbers you can basically make that into your tooth to step authentication and since you can have multiple Google Voice numbers over the multiple accounts, the person will not only need to have um, a reason to target you, they have to get into the mailing system in the first place and, and goes from there. So it's something you might want to check out. Um, and you can have a string of Google Voice numbers where it just sends it to you. I, I, I've done that, and it's not that hard to make. And if, if anyone wants me to make a video on that, then let me know. And in fact, I, I even got a video on how to set up Google Voice numbers, so check that out. But if um, you got any questions on that, then let me know. Um, I'll see if I can make a card uh, on it, so it will take you there. But anyways, as far as that goes... Um, Please like, subscribe, share, check out the Patreon campaign, and donate there to help me out. But um, if you do have any questions on this, then let me know, and I'll try to help you out as much as possible. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.